Here is the tail of the tape. Bissett comes in with a record of 22 and 9, seven wins by knockout, eight by submission. Both fighters coming in five foot ten, no height advantage whatsoever on either side. Dueling a nice crisp seven and four. Three of his wins by knockout, two also by submission. Fighting out of Trenton, New Jersey. Let's set it up to Adam Palazzo for the official introduction. the Dressler's Law about of the evening. Serious injuries, dedicated lawyers with offices in three Connecticut locations. That's Dressler's Law. The following fight is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red and black trunks. He weighed in at 145 pounds. His pro record, seven wins, four losses, with three victories by knockout and another two by submission. Hailing from Trenton, New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, Tim the Jaguar Dooley. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the pink trunks. He weighed in at 146 pounds. His pro record, 22 wins. Nine losses with seven big victories by knockout and another eight by submission. He is a UFC alum and is the pride of both Stafford Springs and Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Matt the Mangler. Your referee is Brian Miner. John, went over the rules in the back. Fight hard, but keep it clean. You want to touch gloves? Do it now. Good luck to you both. Adam Palacio bringing the heat on that introduction. That's what this fight is worth. Let me tell you what. This one's going to be a war. Matt Bissett coming back to Hartford, fighting in his home state for the first time, taking on Timothy Dooling. We are cage side at the Hartford Convention Center. Michael Parenti joined by. Filthy Tom Lawler and Paige Monroe. This one is going to live up to the hype, I think. And I think the records don't mean anything when you get in that cage, Tom. Those doors lock. Doolin's been in with some of the best in the world. So has Bissette. This could be a back and forth. Entertaining, just as we saw in that last fight. Bissette with a nice combination to open things up. Now trying to go upstairs. Set. If you count the fight he had for the Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series, actually had three fights at UFC. That one ended in a knockout loss, but the set actually injured his hand. The fight later overturned to a no contest when Holobar failed the drug test afterward. So it did not count against his record. And then got the call to UFC 20, 220 rather, in Boston as a last minute replacement. At the time, Tom, actually 24 hours before he got that call, had announced that he was going to retire from the sport. So the plans changed in a hurry, and here he is three fights later, still at it. And now breaking ground in Connecticut as CES brings you the first sanctioned show in the Nutmeg State. And it's been an exciting one here. We'll see what the plan is here as he faces Timothy Dooling. Both guys throwing a lot of feints. Nothing real heavy landed so far. Oh, he said catches that leg kick at that, that side kick attack. This is, oh, oh, he's able to land a straight back fist. Dooling's head kick of his own. Dooling popped up pretty quickly. I was surprised. I thought he may be out, and Bissett may have been able to just pound his way to a, uh, to a finish, but Dooling pops right back up. A lot of times that kick misses. You think you're out of danger. Bissett read it, came back with a spinning back fist. Dropped Dooling, but hey, Dooling's ready for it. He's tough. He's been in there with some of the best. He's taking shots. Certainly no stranger. Takes a front leg kick, shakes it off. Dooling tried to work that jab, followed by the right hand. Stalking his prey like a Jaguar would. Set with some looping shots. Dooley leaps in with a nice short elbow. Uh, Dooley's hey, hair tie is out. <laughs> stuck, stuck on his body there. 
set, initiates the clinch, dueling with a body shot. And, oh, there the hair tie went, back to the center. Slips trying to land upstairs. Two nineteen to go in round number one. Instead of reaching out there, trying to gauge the distance, Dueling leaps in with a lead uppercut, almost on its mark. That's the, the second time. Bissette was able to land a punch there over the top. Uh, he was able to catch the kick earlier, doing it just stepped in with a low kick there on the set to the punch. So perhaps he's, he's cued in on the timing of that leg kick. Bissette executing those overhand rights, but Dooling's done a nice job covering up, absorbing most of the blow. Yeah, those are all coming at seemingly the same angle. Oh, that one landed. That one snuck through. Nice short uppercut with the right. Dulin's a little wobbly. Down he goes. Bissette now on top, and here come the elbows. He'll be a little more wobbly after some of the short elbows on top. 1.15 to go. Plenty of time for Bissette. Bissette sending him into half guard on top here. Dulin trying to work back to the full guard. Bissette not having it. The sense really caught him with two nice shots. First, that spinning back fist, then followed by that right hand that sent him. Yep. Well, but now at he's, least set, wobbled he's him. Yeah. setting up a head and arm triangle here as he's got his head underneath that shoulder. He's peppering him with shots, dueling, able to push him back and defend a little bit there. Bissette's corner on him there for giving him time, yeah. giving dueling time to recover. Dueling landed a nice short elbow. Yeah, a little grazing elbow on the way over. Now Bissette with another elbow. It looks like Doolin's busted up pretty bad on the right side. I think below the eye. He's got a little cut on this left side. Left side there, like right on the temple. Yeah. He's controlling the wrist. Needs to be setting up a triangle attempt, possibly. Final 15 seconds, solid first round so far from Matt Bissette. Cut under that right arm, too. Goes for the this hip bump sweep there. Nice short left uppercut out of the clinch. It's around. Seems to come to an end. Yep. Yeah, that was a long five seconds for sure. I thought that one oh, was over. Oh, going back to the wrong corner. Wrong corner for the set. <laughs> now that happens sometimes. What can you do? But a good first round nonetheless. He landed that early spinning back fist that sent Dueling down, but Dueling popped up quickly. There was two knockdowns in that round. That's right. Or the second one may have been a, a shot right after, but. I believe the second one wobbled him. Here is the first one. You see the this lazy fist, and there's that oh. spinning back fist. Dueling went down, got up quickly, and able to avoid more damage from that point. Yeah, kind of a flash knock down there. The set appeared to sustain a cut, Tom. There's, there's that other right hand right to the chin. Yeah, there's the one that got him. That just kind of wobbled him and set the stage for Vizette to more or less just push him down there. Yeah, he landed a nice short uppercut as well as Dueling tried to step in for the shot. But Little well, ground and pound, but not fans, enough. Bissette did sustain a brief cut that the ringside physician checked out just for a second. Nothing nothing too damaging. The fight will obviously continue. We get ready for round number two of a scheduled three rounds here in the featherweight division. Matt Bissette in the pink trunks. Tim Dooling in the red. Bissette now egging on the crowd. Said that's one. That's one. Let's go, baby. All it takes is one shot, so. That's true. Dueling didn't want to touch gloves there on that one. Nice uppercut to start off by Bissett. Rear uppercut. Dueling sneaking that left jab in there. Dueling has tried to work that jab throughout oh. the fight. I think that kick snuck over the top. That's how he, he, he ate part of the shin and then an overhand right to follow. Nice combination by Bissett. First 40 seconds here of the second round. Side kick. Again, that overhand right just grazing the top of Doolin's head. Not quite in the sweet spot. 
right to the chest. Doolin just kind of jumped into that right hook, right cross. Ate it right in the sternum. Now certainly slow you down. 3.50 to go in round number two. The set again, just letting his hands go. Very comfortable in the stand-up. He's always been throughout his career. And a short jab by Doolin to counter. And tries to land that overhand right. Yeah, Doolin dunking his head, though. I think the set might be wise to it. Throw another uppercut. It seems like kind of be off balance every time he steps in. Too heavy on that front foot. Oh. A little slip by Bissette, but he luckily for him stayed out of the way. Then he damaged. Yeah, maybe some of that hair tie was just sitting in the middle of the cage there. Tries to go for that rear uppercut again. He's been throwing that, that overhand right. We haven't seen any straight right hands from Bissette. No. For all this looping punch, which Served him well. I mean, he caught dueling early on with it. Not really looking to establish the jab. Just going to go in there oh. with that right. Just ducked right under the punch of dueling. Gets Perfect take, timing. Yeah. Brilliant. Two and a half to go in round number two. He's looking to set this hook. Drags dueling back, although. Dueling taking the bottom position here, but not really doing much. He doesn't have much of a defensive uh, guard here. And now Bissette in side control. I think he stepped over the left arm. And if so, this could be a real trouble, real problem for Timothy Dueling as Bissette possibly could go for a crucifix here. Yep, he's got that left arm blocked with the shin. Uh, but Dueling's able to step over. Bissette takes wrist control. With the left arm, he has the left arm trapped. Of dueling there for a second. I mean, Bissette's going to be putting up two fingers after this round if it stays this way. Yeah, Bissette just wearing him down now in the second round. Again, good stand up, and he gets him to the canvas and just smothering him here of these last 30, 35 seconds or so. Dueling really no answer for this. Yeah, not looking to pass, just looking to stay on top and land some ground and pound and control the round. Dueling trying to sit up. The longer he stays down on that elbow, the harder it's gonna be to generate any offense. If he can get up to that hand and start using his hips, maybe he can look to sneak back for this guillotine. One minute to go in the second round. Bissette looking to take a commanding lead going into the final if it gets that far. And they say timeless there on the back of Bissette's trunks. But <laughs> time's running out for Tim Dooling on bottom here in the second round. Oh, I agree. He's got to mount some kind of offense here to turn this round around. But it doesn't appear there's going to be enough time for him to do that. 36 on the clock. Bissette in complete control. Dueling very competitive, but again, Bissette just controlling the pace. Fighting in the exact fight that he wants to fight, now letting Dueling come in here and try to fight his own fight. That's been a big key for Matt Bissette here in his Hartford homecoming. Who wouldn't want to fight this fight? I mean, you're on top. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not getting hit. It's a nice position to be in if you can maintain it. In a short time, looks like Bissette's going to maintain this position until the round ends. Now Bissette lets him up for a second, yeah. Dueling trying a little somersault kick there just to close it out, but nothing avails. Bissette gives him a little pat on the rear end for his effort. That's two rounds in the books for Matt Bissette, who's looked crisp, who's looked sharp in his homecoming. Tom, if you're Timothy Dueling, what's the strategy here in round three? You know you need to finish or a stoppage. I think you try to keep it on the feet. I mean, we've seen every time it hits the ground, it's a losing proposition for Dueling so far. Bissette's been able to get on top. He's been able to control it. Uh, And speaking of that, let's hear what Dueling's corner has to say. Yeah. Double the jab up, come down and you've got to turn the pace up. Then you get in the clinch, control the clock of the head, go to short up, okay? You heard him? Well, I think anyway, if we didn't hear it, they would probably echo your same advice to keep it standing up. I think there's a chance at least to land a glancing blow or land one on the chin and he can finish the fight and stop it. We've seen it before. We've seen fighters. We've seen Eric Spicely in the last fight who we thought 
was yeah. about to be down on the scorecard by a round, land a short right hand and knock his opponent out. So there's always that opportunity. I think it's harder against a fighter who's established a firm pace to try to get him on the ground and get a submission. I think at this point, Dueling just has to let his hands go in this third and final round, and we'll see what his strategy is. So here it is, the third and final round of this co-main event. Matt Pissette in the pink trunks taking on Timothy Dueling in the red and black. Dueling going upstairs with the kick. Throwing out that left high kick. Michael Parenti, Filthy Tom Lawler, and Paige Monroe cage side at CES 55, brought to you by Modelo, live on UFC Fight Pass. Good. Little short jab there by Dueling, steps in with a big rear uppercut, which we saw Bissette use very well earlier on. Shot to the rib cage there by Dueling, straight to the body. And then it goes right back to it with the kick. Tries to come over the top with the punch. Just misses. Seems anyway for the first minute that Dueling has the game plan that we both spoke about. Stay on your feet. The problem is he only has one round to make this game plan work. I mean, he's down two rounds to none. I've got to imagine. Nice jab. I mean, Matt Bissette's not the judge, but I think he won that first round. I think he won, won round number two as well. Dueling with a nice left. Goes back to the body with the kick. Bissette more than likely knowing where he is in the scorecards. You wonder, Tom, if he gets into a situation where Dueling is starting to get the better of the exchanges, does Bissette go for the takedown and try to ride it out? Is there a danger in perhaps doing that, even if you're effective on the ground? I mean, you have to fight, but here's the problem. Bissette's done virtually nothing in that first minute of the round. Now he gets taken down here. We'll see oh. if Dueling can do anything. You know, perhaps Bissette was just too complacent. Yeah, possible uh, interesting turn of events here. You're right. Maybe Bissette comfortable with the lead, not trying to engage as much, gets caught off guard a bit. Sometimes that can yep. lull you to sleep, and Dueling gets the takedown. And now Dueling has a little opportunity here for the final three minutes, yeah. if he can make something happen. And he's pushing the pace. There's a sense of urgency on a Tim Dueling here, and that's exactly what there should be as we go into the third round. But set now, he wants to fire back. Set now recognizes that Dueling obviously coming in here to get the finish in this last round and has to be on his toes. Only two and a half to go, but set with that uppercut again. Ducks out of the way to jab nicely. I mean, even if you're winning the war, you can't just lose battles on purpose, you know? It's too, too great of a risk, too many casualties. That was a good clean right to the chin there by Doolin. That could have been a troublemaker if Bissette had really stepped into it. Doolin going back to the body here. Bissette fires back with a high kick. Oh, nice overhand right, right there. Now Bissette opening up a bit. Now here goes Bissette upstairs with a kick. Doolin egging him on, asking for more. Licking his lips. <laughs> and he landed his... Land some shots right afterwards, Spin. avoids those, but not, be, not able to capitalize. There's that somersault kick again, or whatever you might call it. You may have a different name for it. Cartwheel. 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 Somersaults forward. Cart okay, cartwheel. that's the yeah. cartwheel, folks. 140 to go in the third and final round. Oh. Dueling at least having fun in there, but has to do something dramatic here in this final minute and a half if he's going to escape with the win and Sh spoil the party. Shook out that left hand, not sure if it's her or if he's just getting himself ready for this final 90 seconds. Big leg kick by Bissette. Dueling just ate it, fired back. Set with the high kick, blocked. Everlance of punches on the end of it, bloodies up Dueling's nose now. Yeah, Bissette now finishing strong when he has this fight, at least seemingly in the bag. And Bissette talking to him. Bissette now having fun getting the crowd on its feet. Anticipating these final 40 seconds, Dueling a bloody mess as you mentioned. I think after that takedown, might have been a little bit of a wake-up call, Tom, for Bissette in this final round to not get complacent. And now here he comes up again on his feet, unloading rights and lefts. Oh, 
We go into the finishing stretch here. Can Dueling pull something out of his hat? Set still not afraid to mix it up, even in these closing seconds. What a fight. And an excellent homecoming here for Matt Bissett at the Connecticut Convention Center. What a fight. I'll tell you, this one was as good as advertised. Dueling, we knew his resume. We knew what he had been up against in the past coming in. And Dueling showed what he's made of and why a fighter like him has been on the big stage and fought some of the best names in the business. This guy's a great opponent and a great fighter to test yourself against. And Dueling really gave Bissett a test tonight. Bissett just fired up tonight after performing in front of his home crowd against CES MMA 55, the first sanctioned professional mixed martial arts event in the state of Connecticut. And of course, you can't do it without Mr. Connecticut himself, Matt Bissett. We'll see what the scorecards say. Could be 29-28, could look close in the end, or maybe 30-27 across the board. Not sure how the judges will go, but it looks like a definitive victory for Matt Bissett, who really, Tom, controlled the pace over those first two rounds. Yeah, I, I would think this is gonna be a, if not 30-27, Maybe even a 30 26. You know, he got two, essentially two knockdowns there in the first round. Looked fantastic on his feet and looked fantastic on the ground as well in the second round when he got on top. A little bit of a hiccup there in the third as Dueling kind of uh, pushed the pace and lulled him into a false sense of security before shooting the takedown and taking over. But Bissett fired back and made it to the end of the fight. Looking and good. And Dueling certainly knew what he was up against going into that third round and knew he had to come out stronger. So you certainly expect him to be a little bit more aggressive coming out. And I think you're right. I think Bissett may have gotten the wake-up call from that takedown early in the third and said, okay, I can't be complacent here. I got to keep fighting. I got to finish the fight strong because you never know what happens. You can get caught if you're complacent. You've seen it countless times, whether it's boxing or mixed martial arts, sometimes lulled into that false sense of security can be deadly for you, but not tonight for Matt Bissett. And let's be honest, Tom, Coming off that two-fight losing streak with UFC, not sure about his future. This was a fight he needed. Yeah, Bissett's looking to get back to that next level. And this is the first step on that, on that journey, on that path. Let's send it up to Adam Palacio for the official announcement. Fight fans, after three rounds, we go to the scorecards. Judge English and Senadad scored the fight 30-27. Judge Peabody scored the fight 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision, Matt the Manga Bissette! Matt Bissette, what an incredible fight.